Hey guys, thanks to each and every one of you for checking out this video. Pretty excited about this one because I get a lot of questions about how I find places to go fishing. So today, it's all about finding spots on the internet for fishing inshore. All right, guys, so let's dive right in. Um, when I am pre-trip planning for my inshore trips, uh, which I typically do by kayak, but sometimes I do wade fishing or, or land-based fishing, um, I, I always go to this site that you see on the screen right now, smartfishingtides.com. It is a site that is created and maintained by Salt Strong, uh, which is an online fishing club. Um, but it is open to everybody to use. So you don't have to have a membership there. While I'd recommend it, you don't have to. Um, th this gives you some good information that will help you to fi figure out exactly where you, you want to go uh, given the day and given the conditions for, for fishing. Um, so you go to smartfishingtides.com, as you see at the top, and this will bring you to a map and it'll localize around where you are. I'm in Pennsylvania right now. So uh, it comes up to Pennsylvania, and you can see these little icons in here. They look like heads. Uh, these are tide stations. So you can see there's there's freshwater ones, um, but there are also these saltwater ones down here. And, and I'm planning a saltwater trip, so I'm going to come out to the coast of New Jersey, and I can pick any one of these locations all the way up from the hook all the way down to Cape May. Um, and, and figure out what's what's one of the closest ones to where I want to fish. So let's say that I am thinking I want to go to South Jersey, um, down to Cape May, or actually, why don't we skip Cape May? We'll go in, let's try Avalon. Um, so let's say I want to fish somewhere near Avalon, and uh, you can come back in here, and uh, there's a place to put in kayak right here. Um, so click on here, Ingram Thoroughfare. Uh, and you click this right here where it says Sea Tides Fishing Forecast and Weather Details. And this will then refresh the page and it'll bring me right up to that specific tide station. Um, and you can scroll down and you can see what this site has to offer. And it's a lot. And it's great for, for planning uh, your trips um, so that you're not just going out and hoping to find where uh, birds and bait might be. You're actually going to be able to hone in on where they should be. And, and have an effective plan for the day. So what I'll do then is you come down to here and you pick the day of the week that you're going to go. Um, and this is a strike score calendar that that uh, Salt Strong has put together. And it really, it gives you an idea of what the fishing conditions should be uh, and what are your chances of success or how hard is it going to be to catch on those days. And it's based on a lot of things. It's based on the weather, it's based on the seasons of the year, uh, salooner tables, um, the tide and the wind and so on and so forth. So, um, and then, and then the behavior of the specific types of fish that are, and, and it's inshore fish only. Um, so look today, uh, is the 30th, um, Thursday is, uh, is the first and it's a full moon. Um, so you can see a strike score. This is out of 10. So an 8.5, uh, an 8.3, and it looks like pretty good fishing all the way through the weekend. So let's say I'm going to go on Saturday. Uh, so I'll click Saturday and it will refresh below. Uh, you can't see it right now, but it refreshed all the information below. So the first thing I want to do is scroll down to the tide chart and the weather forecast uh, to make sure it's, it's fishable. It's, it's fall weather hitting the northeast, so you can see the temperatures throughout the day are going to be in the 50s, maybe up into the 60s. Uh, you can see the wind uh, 9 miles per hour out of the northwest starting at, at midnight. Uh, and you can see how it changes throughout the day. Um, and you can see it's going to be a fairly consistent northwest, north-northwest, and then west-northwest uh, once you get into the night. Um, you can see the weather above it. So cloud, you know, some clouds uh, throughout the day, full sun, and then some clouds come back in in the afternoon around 4 p.m. So um, from that standpoint, it looks like it's a, it's a very fishable day. Uh, five to 10 mile per hour northwest winds um, are certainly fishable and, and it's, it's typically pretty good for fishing. Now I go down into this section and this is the tide chart. Uh, it's very important when you look at this, look at what times you might want to arrive, what times you might want to leave uh, to, to start honing in on exactly what your day is going to look like. Um, 
The big thing to look at on here is the current flow in the water. So you can see the low tide is uh, 341 uh, a.m. And high tide, the first high tide is going to be 945 a.m. It's 4.4 feet above mean, um, and then it's uh, 0.35. Um, but the big thing to look at here is the angle that you get on this slope here. Um, so the more severe the angle, the faster the water is going to be flowing. And, and a fast water flow is important when you're targeting fish. That's why people that say fish uh, the top of the tide and the bottom of the tide aren't necessarily going to be correct. You can see in between here, the water's not going to be moving that much. It's typically what people call slack tide, and you see it also at the bottom. So the more severe the, the, the line, the more uh, current flow you're going to get, and that's a good time to target. All right, so I talked a little bit about the current, how to read this tide chart. Um, and if we scroll down a little bit more on this page, uh, we get into some other pretty cool things. So the, the first thing is the hourly feeding projections. And this is, again, based on all the different uh, uh, factors to be considered, weather forecasts, lunar activity, the tides, um, all of that. You can see in here a little bit of shading in this area and in this area over here at the top and that just shows that's that's really when it's dark um and, and the the higher the bars the the better the feeding activity is anticipated to be so you can see in this case between 5 a.m and 8 a.m look to be the prime for the day and then 5 p.m and 8 p.m um so it's always a good place to check it out um so based on this and this above i'm going to want to start fishing sometime probably between uh five and, and seven so that I can get into that swing and, and into this area here. Uh, we're fishing in the, the late afternoon, 5 p.m. through 8 p.m. Um, it just lines up really well. So uh, the, the coolest part, I think, is when you get down to the, the bottom section here. Now you have your local radar, and I'll open this so you can see it, but I'm not going to go into a ton of this because I don't use this a lot for the planning unless I'm going to be fishing a day where – uh, there's there's potential of storms um, Saturday. There's really not. But this is really handy to keep on your phone and keep open. So when you're out on the water, uh, if you see something coming, uh, you know, there's a chance of storms. You can actually go through and see the storm projections if you click on that. Uh, and you can play it in motion so you can see them moving through. It's really nice to zoom in. Uh, really tight on, on where you are at that specific time and take a look at which way the, the weather system is moving and see whether or not it, it's going to hit you square on or you have a chance to get around it or uh, if, if it might miss you. So I, I always keep that in mind and keep that available on, uh, on my phones when I'm out on the water. So uh, that's the next one. But, but the next one is the, the satellite map, and it's run by, on the, the Google platform so it's a google map and it's a satellite view and again like anything you can zoom in for this i'm actually going to go to the full screen and uh so you get a better view of it and i'm just going to zoom in on the the area that i'm looking at again it's this tide station is still highlighted for you and i'm going to bring it in a bit tighter and this is where i'm going to start looking for spots that might work so if we go back to the wind um and again, just to, to refresh my memory, the wind during that day was going to be northwest. Um, and you come down in here and again, zoom in. So the, the wind, uh, you, you know, whatever direction. So coming out of the northwest uh, would be coming in this direction. If it's coming out of the northeast in this direction. You look at different areas and start zooming in. So if we come up to this spot that says South Channel, and we have the wind coming in this direction uh, and the outgoing tide in the afternoon. Maybe this bend in here is something I want to look at. You can zoom in on it and see, is there any structure in there? Um, is there anything that makes it look like that might hold some fish um, in, in this bend right here? Um, it's it's kind of tough to tell right now, but uh, by this zoom, I don't see a lot. Um but you can go through the map doing that and start looking at the different points and the, and the different areas. Keep scrolling to the side. You can see in here, maybe this is something that you might want to fish on the incoming. Um, is the wind coming across? Is it wind protected? Is it wind blown? What about these docks down here? Uh, is there something in those in this area down here that makes it interesting based on those conditions? And that's what I do. I just go through the maps 
and look for things like that. Uh, let's say I was I was going to target flounder. It's prime fluke season, and I, I want to find a good spot to look. Well, I'd, I'd start out with the zoomed out map, and I'm putting in down here. And you know, one of the biggest places to go in this area is Patty's Hole up here in the Patty Thoroughfare, um, where it can get fairly deep. But there are a lot of other areas that could be good. Uh, so maybe on the outgoing tide with a northwest wind coming again from the top left down to the, the bottom right, I might look into this area here and take a look at whether or not this is something I might want to fish. With the water coming out and the wind coming this way, it would sweep bait up and around this point right here. So maybe I'd fish the back side of this point. Maybe I'm going to fish back down in here where it's all coming around the bend and then it washes out into the main channel. So maybe it's this point that I want to fish and then back along the shoreline. Um, so, so you really look for those and look for the structure. You can see in here uh, just by being zoomed into this level that it's not a, a, a flat bank all the way down. There's a lot of depressions. There's a lot of structure there. And it's something that the bait fish could hide in. Uh, they could come in back behind here and hide. You get a little perhaps an eddy there that you want to check out. Um, so that, that's what I'm looking for when I'm looking for spots to go out and fish. So in this case, I might check out that area. Um, now, if you haven't been to an area, you don't necessarily know how deep it is based just on this view. So um, if we come out of this, we can move down into the next view, which is the, the sonar view, um, and check it out there. Okay, so here's the sonar view. Uh, again, you can see the little head right here. This is the tide station that we're using um, for, for this video. And this is pretty cool. It's, it's a Navionics map. Um, and it shows, you can, it's pretty cool that you can see the satellite view on land. And then it'll give the water view with the, the water depths um, within the, the channels and, and everything like that. So... Uh, taking a look at this tide station and you come out here and what I'm going to be looking for is depth changes. Now, I'll go back to the area where we were looking before and see how that matches up. And you can see the specific area I was talking about is just blue, which means it's not charted by Navionics. Now, if you have a small boat, a uh, skiff or uh, a kayak especially, you can still check these out. Um, yeah, I mean, you can get through just a couple of feet of water, less than a foot of water in a kayak, um, and you can just come up in there and check it out yourself. And I would recommend doing that because Navionics does not chart 100% of the water, as you can see here. And it is quite possible, and I have dozens of locations that if I were to zoom out, I could point out where it's showing blue or it's even showing green, which is typically land. Um, or really dry, uh, that there are actually holes that you can fish, you know, anything from three to, to five feet at low tide, all the way up to 15 to uh, 25 feet. And then there are also areas that will say on Navionics it's 10 feet, but it's actually 30 feet. So you're going to want to check this out. Um, you know, the one thing that, that I, I typically tell people is you can do your pre-trip planning using the internet and using online maps and, and, and resources like that, but um, and you'll get a really good swing at where the fish are. If you understand how fish move, uh, the locations where you can find them, um, you'll have you'll have a really good swing. You can you can identify a few spots to hit during the day, and you'll usually be able to catch um, fish in in one or more of those uh, locations every day. Um, but time on the water still does matter. You know, if you find places like this that look like they could be interesting, but this tells you you can't get there because it shows no depth, check it out anyway. If, if it looks like you can get in there, nose in there. Turn on your depth finder, drop a line to see how deep it is if you don't have one, um, and, and get a sense as to what it really is in there. And, and that's the time on the water that matters. It's not sitting there for 30 hours um, just trying to figure out an area through every tide and every condition. It's getting out on the water and evaluating what you've already researched and figuring out whether or not this is going to fit into the conditions you're in or or, or perhaps it'll, it would fit in with other conditions or it's just not worth going to because, yes, in fact, this is it is fairly dry even in high tide and it's not worth checking out. So a couple of things that I look for when I'm looking for, for these areas and, and I'll, I'll just use places that actually have some depth so that I can show you. 
Um, so you take a look at this bend here. Uh, I look for the, the depth changes. Um, and the more lines that you have together, the more severe the, the drop. This is the contour of the bottom. So you can see in here, it's fairly flat. You get little, little bumps and ridges in there, but it's fairly flat. And then over here, you can see that there's a, a depth change there. So it's a really severe depth change against a very smooth um, boundary of the sod bank there. So maybe I would fish in along the structure here, but I wouldn't be fishing out here. You see a lot of boats drifting channels and they go right down the middle. They do that because it's easy but they're literally fishing a desert. There's there's not a lot of places on a flat bottom, especially without vegetation, for uh, ambush predators to hide. And, and they want to hide so that they can ambush their prey. They want to ambush the bait fish as they come through. If it's flat like this, there's not much in there unless there's a lot of grass, um, a, lot of, a lot of weeds in there that they can dig into and, and bury themselves in. Um, on ledges and ridges, um, Shelves, there are plenty of spots. They can just tuck themselves in there. Uh, they can sit right above. And as a bait, a bait fish comes up the incline, they're waiting at the top as it comes over the top of them. A, a flounder, for example, can just, just launch right up off the bottom and grab them. Uh, same thing with weak fish. They'll, they'll look for bends. They can kind of sit in the structure around a bend. Um, holes are, are good. You know, the bait are coming through and then there's a hole and they're sitting down in the hole. So I look for that. I look for structure that changes. I don't like things that look the same. I don't like this area in here under pretty much any situation for the fish that I'm going to be targeting because it's just flat. Call it a desert, call it a wasteland, call it a football field, whatever you want. It's not good. Uh, it's not good for fishing or it's not as good. Yeah, you can catch things there occasionally, but that's not really where you want to look. You look at a place like Patty's Hole here, and you can see why this produces, right? There are spots in here that really produce well. Um, and those spots are not where a lot of the the, uh, the boats are drifting. Now, yes, there is structure in here, uh, but there's also structure down and around here. And these ledges work really well. You can see where the lines get tighter together. That's more structure. Um, so you want to look for that. You want to look for bottoms like that. You don't want to fish up in here, even though it's, you know, nine feet deep. Uh, you don't want to fish in there because there's nothing there. You might want to do this because you have a few feet of relief um, and, and some changes. You might want to fish right here because you're coming from around 9 feet, 8 feet, all the way down to 22. Um, and then it comes straight back up real fast until you get to 4 feet right here. So that's the kind of structure that you're looking for. Line it up with the wind, the northwest wind. Here the wind's coming down. Um, here's a point that I might fish as the as the outgoing tide is going left to right uh, and the wind uh, from the northwest is coming from the top left to the bottom right it's coming down in this direction and it's going to sweep the bait fish around that turn and then you have this great structure here you have a drop off from 10 feet to 20 feet this is a good spot that i target i target right up in this area up here and then i would um, let myself drift backwards with the wind bringing me this way and the current bringing me this way and kind of set up here and just drift back hopefully in this direction here. I'd stop when I got out about here and I'd, I'd move to a different starting spot, maybe start out at this and come down through here uh, to get everything as it sweeps around. But that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for that type of structure and I'm looking for multiple areas that have opportunities like this before I hit the water every day. So I'm not just going out there with the boats and drifting. Uh, I'm going to zoom out real quick and show you uh, one drift. It's not near this tide station, but it's a very popular drift. And, and hopefully you'll get to see what I'm talking about. It's very popular, meaning a lot of people are there. Um, but I, I can't really figure out why. And that's right here. So, so you get this drift right here. And you have, you're starting in like 8 feet, 15 feet, whatever it is. And you get this long, slow drift through here. And it's a very gradual change. You know, you come right up in here and you're 9 feet, 10 feet, 12 feet, 13, 14, and that's it. Um, that's nowhere near the type of, of structure that I'm, that I'm looking for. That's, that's relatively flat. When you're going a quarter of a mile and you're only moving 2 feet in depth, that's, that's not a lot. Uh, this is much better down here where you can see all these lines closer together. You can see it all down to here. These are much better. You don't want this flat stuff in here. You want this over on the right. 
uh, this over on the left. So that's that's what I'm looking for, and that's how I use the maps to do it. And in this case, this is a sonar map. Uh, so you know, I, I would I would always recommend checking this out. Again, it's smartfishingtides.com. Uh, again, it is by Salt Strong, uh, and and it's pretty cool. You can, you know, I'll go back to the the main page here. Um, you can go and you can look all over uh, on this. So let me zoom out, and you'll get to see. Look at all these tide stations. So you're up in New York, Long Island, Montauk. You start getting up towards uh, the the further northeast up, even in the main. I mean, it it's going to cover the entire coast and. Zoom out a little bit more. You can get to any area here. Um, you know, you want to. You're coming down towards Moorhead City. Well, let's go to Cape Lookout, and we'll check that one out. You're going to get the same types of information. Everything will be the same. Look at the same day as Saturday. You can see it's a 6.5. You can see they have a lot more wind, 17 miles an hour. They're going to have rain during the day. Uh, here are their tides. You know, real quick, they they have because of the weather. On that day, they don't have the same feeding patterns that we have up in the northeast on the same day. Um, and then you can just take a look at the sonar maps and, and the satellite maps, and you know you can see what the conditions are that you have to deal with there. You know, and, and you can see some of the challenges. You want to surf fish there? Well, look at Cape Lookout here. Um, it's pretty flat, pretty flat there. Look back in Barden Inlet. It looks like you got some opportunities back in here. You go one foot down to 19 feet. So. Um, I know nothing about this area, uh, to be honest with you, but you know it's something that looks interesting to me, and it's something that I would I would certainly uh, check out if I were ever down in that area. Uh, thanks for checking out this video. If you found some value in it, please don't hesitate to hit that subscribe button. I greatly appreciate it. Share the video, uh, likes are, are appreciated, and comments, comments and questions. I'd really be interested to know what other resources you use when you're planning before you go out on your trips. And uh, until the next video, tight lines.